Hey guys, what's up? It's Dusk. Sorry I haven't been able to get to you with the um, other information for the new cards that they came out like I had promised. But based on the way it was going, where the fire, uh, the nature ones came out first, the fire ones came out the day after, as soon as I saw the light ones come out the very next day after that, I thought, okay, I wait two more days and we'll get the water and darkness versions for the Firebird and Super Rare Cycle. I was wrong. Sorry. But we've got other cards, so I'm going to show off the lot of them today. Six in total. But before I do, this is just me showing off, just had it made. I have obtained my own gauntlet, or nature at that. I intend to use it with my videos. In tandem with Whichever one of these I feel like using, it's the Blackest Night Ring Spectrum set for the Green Lantern series. It has all the colors of the emotional spectrum. My personal favorite, which I will likely be wearing with the majority of my videos, is this one. If I can just get the dang thing on. Yellow, the ability to instill great fear. It lights up, but I don't want to blow too much time. You'll just see it in a couple of my dual videos. Now that my showing off is done, let's move on with our first card. The Light Firebird Lux. Level 2, which means... Oh joy, you can start stacking up the dragon cost reducing as early as turn 2. So, turn 2 Lux, turn 3 Lux, turn 4, any of the other Firebirds, turn 5, bring out any dragon, um, let's see here, level 8 or less. Broken. But yes, it does have the Dragon Song ability, as will as do the other Firebirds, where you only where you'd have to tap one less mana to bring out dragons. And sticking with the cycle pairing, Andromeda's Envoy, where Andromeda is the name of the super rare for light. We'll move on to that in just a moment. But the effect is that if one of your dragons would be banished, you may banish this card instead. Kind of broken. Because as anyone would expect, the dragons are going to be the biggest target of removal, at least up until the next booster. Nature can still mess with them pretty well, but banishers, banishing effects from fire and darkness are going to have to work around this thing. Now luckily, it is a 15... I mean, a 1,500 creature. So, even Little Hissy can get rid of this thing by attacking it untapped. So yeah, that's, that's a good way to get around this. Our next card in the Super Rare of Light is Andromeda of the Citadel. The stats are matching that of Orion, level 9 Celestial Dragon, 11,500k. It is a double breaker with two pretty irritating abilities. I don't want to see this on my enemy's side until I have amassed a good collection from this set. Fortress of Light. When this creature enters the battle zone, put the top two cards of your deck into your shield zone based down as new shields. That right there is going to be a pain in the neck combined with that other new Celestial Dragon who is normally level 6, 6,000 double breaker, but if you have at least 5 or more shields, boom, I think it doubles up to 12k and then gets trouble breaker. This is one of many other cards that already exist that can make that thing more viable. Or more rather, if for whatever reason, in the ideal defensive deck for that thing, you should lose one too many shields, here's your late game recovery. All Strike is the name of its second ability. Whenever a creature attacks you, 
Your opponent chooses one of his or her untapped creatures in the battle zone. Tap that creature. Now, you might be thinking that this is any old attack. Just any attack come that the enemy launches and you can tap one of their untapped creatures. While there are currently no rulings on this, I do not believe that is the case. It says any whenever creature attacks you, which means this effect should only, if I'm right, kick off if the enemy is attacking one of your shields or you. If they're trying to attack one of your creatures, I do not believe this ability goes off. If anyone can find a ruling that would argue otherwise, by all means, I am currently not seeing it on the wiki. We finally have the name of our water dragons, thanks to Kindrix the Psionic. I mean, Kindrix the Psionic. They are called Tsunami Dragons. This one also happens to be an evolution creature that you can put on any dragon, any dragon at all, as early as t 6 mana in your mana zone. And 9,000 power double breaker, pretty good that early in the game. Or actually, that's a, that's just about when we hit mid game. Now that I think about it, so not really early at all. But then again, you add in these firebirds, it can be pretty early. But yeah, like I said, evolution put on top of any of your dragons. Level six, 9,000 double breaker, and here's where we start getting annoying with this card. Since evolutions can attack straight off the bat, psionic aura is kind of broken. This creature cannot be blocked. So it's a Queen Orion that's stronger and can come out a whole turn earlier. Now granted, the only way you're going to get this thing on turn 6, unless they make some level 5 and lower tsunami dragons, is if you pair it up with fire and have a couple of the currently 3 level 5 armored dragons which are hyperspeed maelstrom and I know there was a third one I'm probably wrong I'll just remember it some other time but yeah you get an Orion that cheap I a uh, clean Orion that is and finally, Mind Hack. At the end of each of your turns, you may draw a card for each shield that was broken that turn. Again, this in itself is pretty broken as every other effect on this card supports that. Now, granted, if one of those shields you broke was a Terror Pit or a Root Trap, then this effect will not go off because this specifically says at the end of the turn which means this thing has to be in the battle zone at the end of the turn so yeah if you have not obtained terror pits or root traps yet you might want to get on that start trading anything you can for those the next three cards are all fire starting with another, a new evolution for dracons and yet again Again, a level 3, just like um, Laser Arm Dracon was. 5k, naturally you put him on top of one of your Dracons. And his ability is Deadly Duo, which is whenever this creature enters the battle zone, you get to search your deck, and then you can take a creature named Bronca the Treacherous from your deck and put it into the battle zone. Free of charge, then you shuffle your deck. That card is right here. There he is, Bronco the Treacherous, level 2, 2k vanilla. Dracon. So essentially, a Vorg for Dracons. Now, normally this combo would be a joke, but the potential is that while, yes, you were probably better off bringing out a laser Dracon on that turn 3, by bringing out the Burn Claw the Relentless to bring out this guy from your deck, you have it set up to have two. I mean, you instantly get the Evo bait out. So, on turn four, yes, you will have both of those powerful evolution creatures that early in the game. Based on the rest of this set, this could make Dracon decks even more deadly than they were already for a rush, or 
this combo could just slow down a bunch of decks. It really comes down to what the rest of this set has to hold. Now, before I let you guys go, and it seems I'm running out of record time anyway, I'm going to move on to the last card that has been revealed thus far for Dragon Strike Furnace, and it's a Shield Blast. Boom! Level 7 Shield Blast of that. For Fire, Dragon's Breath. And let me tell you guys, this thing is broken. Its effects literally read, Banish target enemy creature that has power 3,000 or less. Then, Banish target enemy creature that has power 2,000 or less. Then, Banish target enemy creature that has 1,000 or less. This is, I'm guessing, Fire's new answer to Rush, though I'm personally still sticking with um, Burst Shot for that one. Or is it Barrage? Um, kind of out of it right now. But, yeah, this will help get rid of a lot of enemy creatures that are either A, Rush cards, or B, mid to high level support cards. Um, cards with support abilities but low power, like many of the Cyber Lords. Now, uh, the odds of getting rid of a creature of each of these power levels in that order, eh, I'd say one out of every five times you pull this off. But, yeah, that's the um, cards we have so far. Um, where was I going to go with this? Oh yeah, now I know why this card seems annoying. This is ex that's exactly what I used to do back when I played Chaotic. If anyone played that game, my username was Plague. But yeah, that that is what I would use to do with my Underworld deck. I would just target whatever low power or low health support creatures the enemy would have and just wipe them all out with a. I mean, pretty much like this effect will attempt to do in Kaijudo. But yeah, this time I really am done. I will see you guys later. I am going to leave tomorrow. That is the day after this recording. And I plan to show off two decks. A Firewater Rush and my current personal deck which I don't want to give away just because I know one of my subscribers will be there. So, gotta surprise them. Sorry. See you guys later.